Hello everybody, it's Adam here, coming back to you from Houdini 14, and today we're going to make a bouncy ball rig and use it as an agent and a crowd sim. So let's just get right to it. We'll control click on the sphere, dive inside and set its center to 0.5, and I'm going to move into the 3D viewport, press space bar 4. Sure enough, our sphere is at world origins, resting on the ground. So let's go ahead and give him some rows and columns 48 48 let's go up one level and we'll click the rigging tab and click bone now we're going to start drawing we want him to bounce up and down so the root of the bone is going to be at the base of the ball click move up move right above the top of the ball here and then click to lock that in and now we'll press enter and we have a single bone. We'll do spacebar H to lay this out, and this is going to be our character. So let's go ahead and bind these bones, or this bone, to the sphere mesh. Um, in other programs, this is called skinning, but in Houdini, it's called capture. So we deselect all our nodes, we'll click the capture tool, and we'll walk through the wizard. It says select geometry object. So I do that, and it says enter to complete. But this really should say enter to continue because we do have an additional step. So we'll press enter, we'll read again, select the root object, which is the root here, move our mouse back into the 3D viewport, press enter. And now we have, if we scale our bone, we can see we have some influence. The bone is affecting some of the points in our mesh. Let's return this to one. We'll dive into the sphere object and this capture is not getting all our points, so let's use one that will. Press tab and type capture. Uh, I got the wrong one here. Let's, I rushed through that. Let's press tab, type capture, and we want to use capture proximity. And I'm going to bring up the help card because I really like this icon. It shows pretty much what, we're, uh, what we want. It thinks of the bone as a line that then can reach out in a distance and grab points around it. So let's go ahead and wire this guy in. He's going to replace the existing capture. And when we do that, he's broken because the extra regions field is blank. So we can use the field that the tool made. We'll just copy that and paste it in here. Now we have all of our points being captured. So let's test that by, whoops, let's test that by scaling the bone. And sure enough, we have a bouncy ball. So we'll undo that, and let's create a subnet. This is our character, simple as pie. Let's see, subnet work. I'm going to go ahead and colorize, um, press the C key, bring up my color palette, colorize the chain root purple, because that's I use purple for parameters, and uh, that will remind me that this is where the animation is happening. So with all these selected, we'll do Control X or Command X. Um, we'll go ahead and name this guy Bouncy Ball. And we'll dive inside. I'm going to middle drag those connectors up out of the way, move my mouse to the center, press Paste. And let's just get right down to animating. I'm going to turn on real time, set this to 48. And uh, we're going to take a look. Um, I found this nice little image here. This is basically what we're going to try to go for. So we're going to start off squashed, we're going to rise up, and end up squashed. So let's uh, go ahead and do that with the chain tool selected, or the chain root node selected. I'm going to alt click on all the nodes I'm animating. So that's at frame one, we've got all of those going on. So we're going to set this to 0 0.5 to squash them down, alt click to lock that in. We'll go out to 48. And we'll just alt click on all of them again. And we're looking to the right, which means Z forward is this direction. But I kind of want it to go the other way. So I'm going to go to the left viewport and then mouse wheel out a little bit until I see, there it is. I want to see, we're going to bounce between from this thick gray line to this thick gray line. So uh, we're still at 48, which means we need to set this guy, that's four units, so type a four in the Z, alt click, and now we've got him scooting along. If we go to 24, halfway in between, we want him to rise up, 
So we'll set that to two, Alt-click. We also want him to be non-squashed. So we'll Alt-click on that. And now we have, he's squashing, expanding. And let's go a little bit better. We can go halfway in between one and 24, which is 12. And we're gonna have a really nice big extend on the squash. So he's gonna kind of stretch out as he's rising. Alt-click on that. We'll set this to 18, so he'll lean in a little bit too. And then we'll move to zero and get rid of that, or move to 24 and get rid of this rotation. So he's straight up and down when he's at the top. Then we'll move to 36 here, and we want him to lean back as he's kind of coming in. So I'll we'll click on that. And uh, we'll expand him just a little bit more. So he's got a little more excitement on his stretch even as he's descending. Then he descends down to zero. So that's our, let's just see what we've got here. Sure, good enough. That's good enough for me. You can play with curves all day, uh, but that is our character. So now that we have a character, it, and he's animated, it's time to add him to the crowd. Now if we select the crowd tab, the tools are arranged left to right pretty much in the order that you use them when you're building a sim from the ground up. So the first thing we need to do is bake out our agent. So I'm going to deselect this, click on it, and read the message. It's saying select the subnet. So we select that, we move our mouse back into the 3D viewport, press enter, ask for a clip name, we're going to say this is bounce forward, forward. Uh, we'll go up, press L. I just wanted to show you what was added at the obj level. Then we'll go into this bake agent. And uh, the main thing we want to change here is subnet. We, we want the, this is the name of the folder that appears on the disk. And we want this to be called bouncy ball. The clip name is what we actually typed in that box that appeared. Um, and with that set up, I'm going to hit render control. We're ready to go. We're just going to bake this guy out. We know we have only 48 frames, so we will render. And we're ready to go to the next step. So we're going to deselect all our nodes. Um, and populate will require a ground plane. So let's just go ahead and control click the grid. We'll set this to 12 by 12 by 12 by 12. Enter. And I'm going to do spacebar 1 and kind of return to perspective view here and deselect everything once more. And we'll click populate and it invites us here to select the terrain points, which we do. Press enter, then select. Whoops, see it selected the sphere object. We actually want to read, it wants the subnet. So we're going to make sure we select the bouncy ball subnet. Uh, press and move the mouse back into 3D press enter and now we have agents okay we're getting there so let's just keep chopping through this um, doing a little cleanup here uh, press the L key now I like to colorize the crowdsource node just so it stands out and uh, I can't because we're going to return to that probably a couple times during this process I'm going to deselect all move to our next step now we don't, we're not painting any density, um, so our next step is going to be simulate. So we click simulate and it says select crowdsource. We select it, move our mouse back into the 3D viewport, press enter, and uh, it's building this uh, crowd system and calculating along. We'll get rid of our points here. And I'm gonna mouse wheel out and it gives us this default crowd system setup. Now. I'm going to go ahead and extend my timeline here to 1200. Apply, close, and set this to 1200. And let's go ahead and play and see what we got. Okay, so they're bouncing that way as Z forward. So we've got this one time bounce, and then they all kind of did a shuffle back. <laughs> and then they wander forward. So there are multiple problems with this setup right now. So let's go ahead and correct what we can. Um, now if we zoom in, we know we don't have a stand state. So we're just going to disconnect that. 
and we know our walk state is actually called um, bounce forward, right? Bounce underscore forward. And that causes this to break because, and if we middle click and look down here, we can see we've got the word walk in here. So somewhere some paths are, are still using the default values that the simulate tool created. So we're going to have to correct that. Also, because we only have one, um, one state or one agent here, we, we definitely don't need any transitions. So I'm just going to uh, bypass those two nodes. And let's go up one level and see if we can correct some of our problems here. Now, um, we're going to dive back into crowdsource here and take a look at what we've got set up here. Now remember we talked about agent name, that was the folder name, and this is definitely wrong. This should be um, bouncy underscore ball, and our default state should be, uh, what is it, bounce forward, bounce underscore forward. And with that set up, let's return to our crowd sim, reset the simulation, and you should have probably rewind because um, it has to cook. Let's rewind, and there we go. So we've got this, and this is kind of where I've been at in the past, where I was able to get one bounce working and or one footstep working and then nothing else. And what's going on is we need to once again revisit crowdsource and think about what's happening. The solver is looking at this stack right here, this out, for the states of this uh, agent, right? Now if we look at crowdsource, it's still fetching from the subnet. And if we remember, this bouncy ball subnet only has 48 frames. So that's why it's only happening once. So what we need to do, and remember we baked this out, so what we need to do is we need to switch this node from subnet to disk. And that's it. You don't have to change or browse to anything because uh, the solver will append the name of the agent, which is Bouncy Ball. Um, and I like to click Reload, and we'll pop back up, and we'll go to CrowdSim, and we'll hit Reset. And this time I am going to rewind, just to get a quicker... Uh, we've reset the simulation, and now if we bounce, we say, ah, foiled again. It didn't work. And, oh, wait a minute. They hopped up again, so I'm like, okay it is working but I've got actually all this lag time in here and this took me hours to figure out why that lag time is in there and it really is a bug in Houdini's bake system so let's go ahead and correct that bug now if you recall we used this bake agent um, and our we were set to the default frames of 240. Now when I click render control, I did specify 48, but the bake process ignores this information. Um, and that's the bug. It actually uses whatever this is set to. So we need to go in here and set this to 48, apply, close, and then once again, we'll just render, bake that out, and now we will return this back to 1200, apply, close. We will go into our crowdsource here and we will reload. Then we'll pop back out, click crowd resim. And now when we rewind, you can see they bounce because they're now exactly 48 frames instead of 240. So that's how you get your own animations used as an agent. Now you obviously you can use some of these other tools up here like paths and obstacles and terrains but this is the basics to get you up and running so that you can uh, play around with the crowd system and have some fun. And with that I'm out.